This is the second section of the variable acceleration chapter. And this is using differentiation. Now, you may have started to see this in the previous uh, section and one of the examples that we did. But uh, here we start with uh, S for displacement. So S, so S is our displacement. Now, if you differentiate the displacement, so these are all going to be functions of, of t, yeah, functions of t. So you're going to have s equals something, which is a function of, of t. If you differentiate that, differentiate, you will get ds dt. Now, what's this mean? This is the change in displacement. over time or over the change in time and what's that well that's the velocity now if you take your velocity and you differentiate that so differentiate again then when we differentiate the velocity we get the acceleration so this is the change in velocity over time change in velocity over time. These are the um, definitions that we've done before for velocity and acceleration. And in fact, another way of writing this is to say, right, you take your displacement and you differentiate it twice. So what we can do, we can take our functions of t and we can go from displacement to velocity to acceleration. So here's an example. If my displacement was 6t cubed minus 2t squared plus t minus 7, then my velocity would be what I get when I differentiate that, which would be 18t squared minus 4t plus 1. And my acceleration would be, well, when I differentiate my velocity, or you could say, right, I take my displacement and I differentiate it twice with respect to time, and I would have 36t minus 4. So this links now our differentiation, or differentiation links displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And we use this when we have variable acceleration. When the acceleration changes, so if when our, uh, we've got variable acceleration, we use this calculus. And calculus is just, calculus, um, is just um, integration or differentiation. So we're using differentiation here. Or integration. Integration is the next section. Um, Whereas if we've got constant acceleration, constant acceleration, we use SUVAT. We use SUVAT when we've got constant acceleration. Particle is moving on the x-axis. So its movement is like this. Yeah, it's going across in a straight line straight down the x-axis. At time t, the displacement x from the origin, or o, is given by this expression here, t to the power of 4 minus 32t plus 12. Part a, we need to find a velocity of p when t is 3. Now, because this is variable acceleration, if we want to find a velocity, it's the change in displacement over time. So notice here we're using the letter x for displacement. That's common. So it might be an x. It might be an s. Either way, we need to differentiate. So if we differentiate t to the power of 4, we're going to get 4t cubed. And then the 30, minus 32t just becomes minus 32. 
So this represents our velocity and we want to find a velocity when t is 3. So we just put t equals 3 into this. So 4 times 3 cubed, 27, minus 32. And that gives us uh, an answer of 76 meters per second. Now, if it just was asking for the speed, we write that down. But it says the velocity. So we need to say what direction it's going in. Since this value is positive, it means it's moving in the positive direction of the x-axis. So it's moving this way. If it was negative, it'll be moving this way. So since it says velocity, we need to give the direction as well. So it's 76 meters per second in the direction of the positive x-axis. Yeah. So it's moving that way, basically. Part B. The value for t for which p is instantaneously at rest. Now, instantaneously at rest means that v is zero. So we just set our function of t equal to zero. So that will give us 4t cubed is 32, which means t cubed is 8, which gives us t equals to 2. And we only need to find the time when it's at rest. So it's at rest um, when t is 2, after t, 2 seconds, part c. The acceleration of p when t is 1.5. So we need to find the acceleration. The acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time. Think about a, a velocity time graph. The acceleration is a gradient and the gradient is dv. Uh, dt, it all fits together. So if I differentiate 4t cubed, I end up with 12t squared and just 12t squared, a negative 32 disappears. I just now substitute in t is 1.5. So I've got 12 times by 1.5 squared. So let's do that. 12 times 1.5 squared and I get 27. And because it's an acceleration, it's 27 meters per second squared. OK, so we should now do exercise 11b, pages 185 to 186. So just as a reminder, we start with our displacement, which could be s or x. When we differentiate that, I'll just put diff for differentiation. That will give us ds, dt, or dx dt, which is your velocity. If I have my velocity and I differentiate it, I'll have dv dt, or it might be um, d squared s, so you start with the very first one and differentiate it twice, or it may be in terms of x, and that gives you the acceleration.